We can implement add two by just using add one twice, uh, or add three by using add one three times. But what we would like to have instead is an add function. So an add function takes a number and then takes a second number m, and we want to add n and m together. And we could do that with add one if only we knew how many add ones to write in the body. But we've seen this problem before. The number of add ones that we need to wrap around n depends on this argument m. It's not a fixed number of add ones. Fortunately, we can use the same trick that we had to solve the problem before. We know that m is a function, since it's a number, it's a function that takes another function, like add one, and we'll apply that function m times to some other argument. So if we take n and m times we add one to it, then we will have ended up adding m and n together. Right. So uh, again, we're exploiting the encoding of m, we're exploiting the way that m is represented to implement this kind of primitive on, on numbers. And that makes sense. Primitive al primitives uh, always are implemented in terms of the actual implementation of the data types that they work on. So we could double check that this add works. Um, if we add 1 and 2 together, that's, uh, you know, add goes in for n over here as the argument, and uh, 2 goes in as m. So it goes right here. So that's why we've got two of add ones applied to one. And if two does what it's supposed to, then it adds one to add one of one. And if we add one to one, we get two. And if we add one to two, we get three. So that's a, an illustration, a test case that demonstrates how add works on two numbers. We can keep playing this game with multiplication because when we want to multiply m and n, uh, the way you can do that is by starting with zero adding n to it, but do that m times. So if you if you uh, m times add n to 0, you'll end up with m times n. And of course, we don't know all the right number of add n's to write there. But um, we can do uh, add 1, uh, sorry, add n onto 0 m times, and then we'll get multiplication out. Right. So we're exploiting the fact that add is effectively curried. Add takes its first argument and then its second argument. So if we give it just its first argument n, we get a function that will add n to any other number. And if we use that function m times starting from 0, then we end up multiplying. So the same idea here as, as add, we used to implement multiply. You could do power and so on. You could keep playing this game. But how about uh, other kinds of operations that aren't just building up on plus, like testing for whether a number is 0? This is something we often don't have in curly that we might like to have. Um, so is zero needs to be a function that takes a number and then it returns either true or false depending on whether that number is zero. To implement is zero, we're going to have to rely on the encoding of numbers again. What's different about the encoding of zero than all other numbers? The difference is that zero applies the function you give it zero times. All the other numbers apply the function at least once. So if we create a function that returns false, and if we use this function one or more times, we'll get false out. But if we use it zero times, we'll get this second argument here to n, we'll get true out. So we could double check, is zero applied to zero is the same as substituting in zero for n here. So we get this term. That's zero times apply this function to true, so we just get true out. But if we do is zero of one, it'll be one time apply this function to true which is just applying that function to true, and we'll get false out. And if you do two, of course, there's just more lambda x falses wrapped around this. Now, you may notice that testing is zero of a thousand, for example, will involve a thousand calls to this function, uh, and it'll keep getting false every time. So it's not a very efficient encoding of numbers, but it is a possible encoding of numbers. Finally, let's look at subtraction. So. Um, Sub 1 is going to be similar to add 1. It takes a number, uh, it takes a, a num and it returns a number. So it's returning a lambda f, lambda x, something. Our job is to apply f to x n minus 1 times. And we could try the same strategy we tried for add 1, which was to first apply it uh, n times, and then, well, in the case of add 1, we could add one more use of f. Here, if we've already done it n times, we would have to remove one use of f. But it's too late for that. There's no way to undo a call to f. There's no way in general to get the inverse of the function f. Uh, so this strategy doesn't quite work for sub 1. But it turns out to be on the right path. We just need to remember the previous number that we had in addition to the next number that we get. 
That is, if we start out with, say, 0 and 0, and if we always take the second part and shift it to the first part while incrementing the second part, then we'll end up with this pattern. We start with 0, 0, then we get 0, 1, because we shifted this 0 over, and then we added 1. And then, if we do it again, we take the 1 and save it, but we add 1 to get 2, and so on. If we do this process n times, then we'll end up with a number n here, but in the first part of our pair, we'll end up with the previous value. And that's how we kind of undo a call to f. We actually do a call to f and then forget about it. We just use the previous answer that we had. So to put this into uh, to functions that work, uh, that sequence that I just showed you is a sequence of using shift. Shift takes a pair. It makes a new pair where it uses, as the new first part, the old second part. Meanwhile, it adds to the old second part to get the new second part. So if we start with shift on 0, 0, we will pair 0 and 1. And then if we shift that, 0 and 1, we'll end up with 1, 2, and so on. So again, uh, after n steps, we just paired n minus 2 and n minus 1, and we get now n minus 1 and n, and we'll be able to ignore this n and uh, just take the n1. That's how we do sub 1. So instead of um, applying the function So we take a number n, and we want to n times use the shift operation on the pair 0, 0, and then we throw away whatever we get on the second part and just keep the first part. That'll implement sub 1. And you can go double check that, and you can go double check that sub 1 of 1 in fact gives you 0. All you have to do is uh, perform the substitution here and then and follow through the, uh, the evaluations. And once you have sub 1, you know how to make subtraction because subtracting n minus m is just using sub 1 m times on m and so on.